Hello folks and welcome to another Sasoy spike boarding tutorial. Today we are in Denver, right near Downing Street, and we are in the Washington Park area and we're going to show you two laps of spike boarding in a fabled park that is home and a great favorite to the roller skiers of this very fine city. So beginners, listen up and experts as well. We're going to do two laps here in Washington Park and what you're watching is spike boarding and spike boarding is a simplified form of roller skiing guys so we're using the same spike tip that roller skiers are but we're using a slightly different hand tool that has no straps and it also has a very special ergonomic shaped handle at the top that allows for the three strokes. So right there in the last 30 seconds, you might want to rewind and you saw all three of them. So right here, we're doing a one over two. There's a one over one. There's a one over two, one over one. And when we alternate with the leg and keep the skateboard spike in one hand, those are called alternates. We will alternate the feet in all four positions. And that's a really nice way to warm up. So once again, spike boarding and stand up spike are directly related to cross country skiing, especially roller skiing. And everybody in Denver who would like to cross train with Nordic cross country ski development, spike boarding and stand up spike have just made it a heck of a lot more casual and very 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 fun so when we stay in the denver area we're hosted in the sloan's lake area so imagine roller skiing from sloan's lake at around 29th and coming down all the way on the cherry creek path and making it through all the traffic and getting yourself to washington park it might be a little inconvenient shall we say Possibly. I'm sure some roller skiers might want to do it. Would you want to do that every day in traffic? You may, you may not. Fact is that the city really hasn't developed the culture of a lot of people commuting on roller skis. At least not that we can see. So spike boarding is a simplified form of cross country skiing, guys. So if you jumped in a pool and you had to swim butterfly on day one, you might not come back on day two. Luckily for swimming, there's three other strokes. Backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly. That's when you get to it, right? So backstroke, backstroke, breaststroke, butterfly, freestyle. You get to freestyle at you get pardon me, you get to butterfly at the end, more than likely. So not that many people swim butterfly. Roller skiing's challenging. It leads to the sport of gods on snow. It's a beautiful activity to do to get your technique dialed in to go cross country skiing. Spike boarding, fantastic way, right out your door. Look at more of the videos that we've made in Denver, in Golden, and in Boulder. If you're a ski mountaineer, if you are a climber, have you been reading the Steve House book, The New Alpinism? Okay, how do you one up Messner? How do you do that? Messner did everything, everything, by himself no less. But the man climbed and climbed and climbed. Steve House figured out, hey, if I want to out Messner Messner, I'm going to just need to do it faster. That me means I need to be fitter. And to be fitter and to get up and down faster, you need to do more than just climb. Read the new alpinism. It advocates completely for cross-country skiing. Cross-country skiing. If you can roller ski every day in Denver, well, hey, more power to you. And we don't say that you shouldn't roller ski. You should roller ski as much as possible, especially if you want good cross-country ski technique, whether that's skate or whether that's classic. You're definitely going to need to roller ski if you want to have good technique come snow time. That's it. Point blank. Now, if you want to cross train with spike boarding for Nordic ski, you will not be disappointed, folks. If you're a cyclist and you want to mix spike boarding with cycling, 
We call it velo spiking and it is a delicious way to multi-sport. You can also begin to tow the board and the skateboard spike around, lock it up, spike wherever you want. Denver is a sensational place to velo spike. But as you can see, the ambi pedal skill set also is quite unique. So from the waist down, what we have done is taken the skateboard kick or the scooter kick. They are exactly the same. Nose over knee, knee over toes. You're skating, you're scootering, and then we've added the Nordic upper body. Pay very close attention to that 90 to 120 degree fixed arm set that is that is transferring power. There's the inside Kubi cross where the leg stays inside the skateboard spike and the supporting leg. And then we'll pop right over into the Kubi cross. There's the Kubi cross. There is no faster way to propel a board up a hill. And of course, imagine taking roller skiers, taking cross country skiers and saying, hands-free skiing forever. Well, not forever, they might do it a little bit, certainly to get some technique. A good cross country skier should be able to double pole 30K and should be able to skate or diagonal stride 30K. That's the mark of a really good skier who's fit. Same with spike boarding. You should be able to stand up spike 30K and you should be able to kubi cross. Um, uh, you should be able to kick, just switch kick 30K. So the lower half, is just a switch kick people and it's been around for a long time not that many skateboarders do it we took it and we put it underneath a skier that's exactly what we did that's exactly what happened in 1985 so underneath a nordic upper body movement was placed was placed skating folks skating pure and simple Look it up online and you'll discover exactly what it was that happened at the time. That the world governing body, FIS, of all ski racing, except for biathlon, banned it. They banned skate ski technique. They banned it for two to three years until finally they figured out, oh gee, why don't we just make it its own stroke? And to this day, thank goodness that wiser minds prevailed. Otherwise, the great Jesse Diggins and Keegan Randall, the first American Olympic athletes to ever win gold medals in cross-country skiing, would not have had the opportunity to do that in skate ski because it wouldn't have been allowed to exist. So spike boarding is as certain as Sunday and it is delicious as sunshine and will rip you to shreds and you will have a blast. So if you're a soccer player and you want higher dominance with your left leg and your right leg, spike boarding is going to engage that ambi pedal skill set as well as begin to give you higher levels of strength and conditioning at a functional level head to toe as well as massive amounts of core. You're engaging core constantly as a cross country skier and what you're watching here is a simplified form of cross country skiing folks. So Washington Park is a delicious place to be spike boarding. It's really really nice. It's very very beginner. It has the tiniest little high side and the tiniest little low side and you have a slow lane and you have a fast lane. It's clearly um, marked. So here we are just doing a nice little uh, slow lap and then we'll speed it up for you a little bit and we'll show you what uh, another lap looks like a little bit faster. And we'll begin to speak a little bit about the technical aspects and the strokes and the counts. But if you've been watching, you've been watching uh, cadence counts of between three to five, uh, and four, been watching a lot of one arm action and a lot of stand up spiking as well. And clearly, you can see that this athlete has been practicing for some time. It's very interesting. We've been incubating the sport for about eight years. When people see something very new, somehow or other, they imagine that they ought to be able to do it tomorrow. Well, you wouldn't become a brain surgeon on the second day after you entered medical school and you wouldn't be tooting a saxophone playing a guitar or 
writing up briefs for Supreme Court justices on day two. So there is no trying spike boarding. Forget about trying spike boarding because that would be as ridiculous as trying to try golf. On the second day, you'd be a one minutia ahead of where you were on day one. So it requires becoming a student. We all understand that, but since spike boarding doesn't exist, sometimes people just imagine, well, if I can't pick it up like a smartphone or drink it like a new beverage, what's it worth? Well, it's worth a great deal, especially if you're looking for superior strength and conditioning that is accessible right out your door. Because roller skiing, even though it is accessible right out your door, it has its logistical challenges. If you live right alongside this park, hey, you can roller ski, bingo, no problem. Come out here, roller ski like crazy. But what's lovely about spike boarding is you can leave this park, whether you live right next to it or not, and you can start going to spike board straight out 32nd Avenue and go out to Lookout and Summit Lookout and get back down Lookout. So folks, Sasoy, the Sasoy Company, which is an acronym for Stand Up Spike, and O and I and X are the three racing indicators for spike boarding. Sasoy means Stand Up Spike, and OIX means Spike Boarding. O is downhill, I is the indicator for Stand Up Spike Stroke, and X will be the indicator for Kubi Cross. Folks, the Sasoy Company is extremely close to providing the entire market with a fully operational disc brake that will function at 45, 50 miles an hour, very similar to road cycling. Check out some of our videos, look, up, look us up on the, on the internet at spikeboarding.com and you will see coverage of us at Lookout Mountain. We summit just the same way as any roller, World Cup roller skiers would, those kinds of things. You guys have Lookout Mountain and you've got Flagstaff. Flagstaff is a killer and Lookout is a Goldilocks mountain. It's a nice little mountain. All of you who climb it on a bike know it's very manageable and you guys that hammer on bikes well are probably doing slightly over 20 minutes from the pillars or under. Um, you guys really hammer are probably doing under or maybe even close. I don't know what the KOM there is, but it's probably close to like, you know, maybe 15 and a half minutes. So the KOM from the pillars uh, to the top of Lookout is around 43 minutes. I can't really remember in Stand Up Spike. And folks, there is money to be raced for. So if you want to get into the sport of spike boarding, please call us, look us up. Number and contacts all below there and you can actually begin to start racing. Also, the spike boarding in Denver is phenomenal everywhere, all over. Sloan's Lake is probably the best place because it's got a little bit higher elevation, but the spike boarding absolutely all over Denver in all the communities is just fantastic. So there's all kinds of room and there's all kinds of abilities uh, to uh, practice the sport all over town as far as we can tell and please make sure to check out all of our videos uh, that we recently made there and of course check out the most recent video that we made there uh, for a recent snowfall because spike boarding in, um, in a slight snow cover or even slightly deeper slush uh, is sensational, especially stand-up spike. It's a heck of a lot of fun and it's a really super, super, super nice challenge and it will augment your telemark skiing, your ski mountaineering, your climbing, and all of you hockey players. If you want to increase your skate game, begin to spike board and kubi cross and develop a switch kit. So from the waist down, we are skating, folks. We're absolutely skating. The better you spike board, the better skater you're gonna be. Spike boarding is a combination of skating on a board and cross country skiing. So it's constant core development, constant lat development, constant VO2 development. Coaches, if you're watching this, start getting your guys and gals cross training with spike boarding, stand up spike, and you will begin to see massive results and your athletes will be delighted. Spikeboarding is a transport sport. It is recreation that becomes transportation. You're looking at a 55 year old athlete. So physical literacy matters, mom and dad. What you teach your kids matters a great deal. And 
when they learn a physical language, it's the same as if they learned a verbal language. So if you have to learn languages later in life, it's very challenging to learn them. And the same goes for physical literacy. If you have to take time off when you're 26, 27 and just had a baby, you're not going to take time off. There is no time. The whole adult clock starts rolling. And if you haven't learned certain physical literacies by the time you're an adult, it's going to be a great big challenge to actually learn them later. So this all begins on a scooter, guys. Check on our website at spikeboarding.com so you can see what is spikeboarding. And you will see the video. It's posted right there. And all that it is is a very simple concept of taking a scooter kick and connecting it to a upper Nordic body movement and behaving on a board the same as you would roller ski. So hope you've enjoyed this video, folks. We'll see you at the next one. Spike boarding in Denver. Denver spike boarding. See you at the next one.